My name is Rowena Johnston. I'm Vice President and Director of Research at Amphire, the Foundation for AIDS Research. And today I'm talking to Tim, Dr. Timothy Henrich, who's Associate Professor of Medicine at UCSF or University of California, San Francisco. Now, uh, Tim, you and I were going to meet a few days ago in Boston at the CROI conference, Conference on Retroviruses and Opportunistic Infections. Yes, uh, a global pandemic. So uh, understandable that unfortunately we were not able to meet in person. Yeah, so what was really nice though is that CROI managed to put all of the talks online. So I was able to watch your talk from home, which I greatly enjoyed. And you were talking about some of the work that you're doing on um, PET imaging. And um, so I thought we should start off maybe like, what is PET imaging and when would it normally be used in medicine? Sure, uh, so, so PET imaging, uh, PET is an imaging modality uh, that detects radiation that's admitted by a drug or something we call a radioactive tracer. It's actually commonly used in medicine, for example, in uh, cancer diagnostics or staging. Uh, and tumors, for example, will, will be more metabolically active. So it's, it's, it's used for a variety of reasons, but I think the main one is really for, for tumor diagnosis staging, as well as for bacterial infections and a, and a variety of other, other situations. Now, you've been interested in turning your attention to PET imaging in HIV infection. Um, and you talked about four potential uses, but I want to focus on just one of those uses for today, and that is that you can pinpoint where HIV infection is in the body. Can you tell us why do we want to know that, or why is it that we don't even know that already? Sure. I mean, we, we certainly know that uh, despite the fact that people can be on antiretroviral therapy for 20, 30 years, uh, for decades, that even then, uh, as soon as people stop taking uh, the antiviral medication, virus usually rebounds within a few weeks, and it rebounds fairly, uh, fairly quickly and fairly aggressively after that. So what, what that tells us is that there is uh, these reservoirs of HIV virus, usually in cells or in tissues that, that may not be circulating in the blood, they actually don't have a very good whole body understanding of where this tissue uh, HIV is residing. But what are just some of the highlights of what you presented? Sure, just, just to mention what we did first is that we took a, an antibody, this is a monoclonal antibody that recognizes the envelope protein of the HIV viral particle. We gave this tracer, uh, this, this antibody, to uh, participants that were viremic, have HIV and have detectable virus in the blood. We gave it to an equal number of participants that were fully suppressed on antiretroviral therapy for different lengths of time, and also in, in an equal number of uninfected uh, control or healthy individuals uh, to really understand what the background noise that we're seeing is. You know what I was so impressed by? I went back and had a look again. The, the spots are just bright as bright can be in the people with viremia, subtle but detectable spots in the people on ART and then just nothing at all in the people without HIV. That's right, we, we didn't know before we started this, these studies what we would see. Uh, obviously this was our best case scenario, I think, where in individuals that we know have a high burden of virus, where there's ongoing replication, there's a lot of proteins being made, we actually saw a lot higher signals, which is what we would expect, hopefully, uh, for something uh, of, this, of this nature to work. It's so satisfying when science works out the way you're expecting it to. It rarely does, but yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you didn't even just stop there. What you added into your work plan was the use of a machine you called Explorer. And uh, that sounded very snazzy to me. Can you let us know a little bit about what this Explorer machine is? Sure. So the Explorer, uh, it's a great name, uh, is what we call an ultra-high sensitive sensitivity uh, an ultra high sensitivity um, PET imager. And what this can do is actually allow us to increase the sensitivity of detecting very, very low levels of HIV proteins that may be in the tissues that we would not be able to detect with regular PET imaging. Uh, and I think over the next five to 10 years or so, this will become the gold standard of PET imaging. The images that you guys have generated are just absolutely gorgeous. They almost look like art. And I would encourage anybody watching this, you can go to the Amphar website and see the story that we wrote about this new technology and see an example of the pictures that Dr. Henrich is generating. So what has been the feedback you've gotten from people who've participated in these studies? had an enormous uh, amount of interest from our community here in San Francisco and even beyond. In fact, we, this is the fastest trial I have ever enrolled uh, in my career 
Um, I do like to say I, I have a personal story of one participant uh, who was our very first uh, pet imaging participant in our program here at UCSF that was funded by MPAR. Uh, and uh, before he had his gown on, the IVs were placed for injection of tracer. And before he went into the, the pet MR room, he turned around and looked at the team. We were all there because we were very excited. And he said, light me up. And, uh, and that's just really been the, the response that we've had from the community so far. So thank you to everybody who, who has participated or thinking of. Well, it's great when it all comes together. You know, you had a great idea, the technology came online just seemingly at the right moment when you were ready to take advantage of it. The, the members of the community are really interested. Everybody's gaining something from this new knowledge and, and our, you know, we're learning ways in which we're gonna be able to advance the uh, cure research agenda. So, I, you know, I, this is a win-win for everybody. And uh, Tim, I wanna thank you for joining us today. Um, this has been really interesting. We are so much looking forward to seeing all the new pictures that come out of your research. Thanks again. Thank you very much. We appreciate it.